Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What's going on, Sartorialist? Welcome back to the Holsey Style. If you're new here, my name is Barry Ramirez. Welcome to the channel and thank you sincerely for watching. In the last year, I have had to revamp my wardrobe. And by revamp, I mean that I have had to sell or will have to sell nearly every item that I purchased in the last two to three years, which has cost me approximately $5,000. Now I will admit that that is a rough estimate. And if I went in and actually did the math, it would probably, probably be a lot more soul crushing than $5,000. So I don't even want to do that. But as I've had to go through and sell off these items, it's caused me to reflect on some of the major mistakes that I've made in my first years in menswear. And I wanted to share those lessons with you with the intent to save you a lot of money. And so without saying too much more, let's crack into it. primary reason why I have to get rid of most of my clothing is not because of some technical mistake that I made or a change in my taste. Rather, it's because I have put on about 30 pounds of muscle. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will know that I train MMA and Muay Thai very intensely, and I also eat a very strict paleo diet. And a consequence of that, since I've ramped up my training in the last six to eight months, has been that I have put on 30 pounds of muscle. So in other words, I'm an absolute fucking specimen. I'm just kidding. But the unfortunate consequence of putting on that muscle mass, as good as it looks, as studly as I look, is that almost all of the clothing that I had no longer fits me and there was no way given the amount of mass that I put on that I could tailor the garments to actually fit me. So I had roughly 20 to 25, 38 regular slim sport coats that suddenly six to eight months later, I can no longer wear and I've had to get rid of them. Now I think that there's an important lesson contained in here, particularly for those of you who are young, 18, 19, 20, 21, your body is going to change very rapidly in the next four to five years. And those of you who are involved in any sort of athletic endeavor, which involves using a lot of muscle mass, like MMA, Muay Thai, of course, weightlifting, football, something like that, right? As opposed to running. So I would say that this seems to support the menswear cliche that you should start slow. And in retrospect, I really wish that I had done that in my first two to three years of menswear. I wish I would have curated a wardrobe and if I were going to buy sport coats, just try to buy four or five of them, which are mid-weight, which I could wear in most seasonal weather, except for the deep summer or the deep winter. And I would highly recommend that you do that as well. Once again, particularly if you are involved in an athletic endeavor that, will, that requires you to have a bit of muscle mass, or if you are very young and starting off on your menswear journey. Although I had to get rid of most of my clothing because of a change in muscle mass, I had to get rid of some of my clothing because of a simple change in style, taste, or aesthetic. Now, I think that there is an important lesson contained here. Take, for example, the field coat. I first purchased a field coat from Spear and McKay, I believe two, no, I guess it would have been two years ago in their fall, winter 21 season. It was a green houndstooth tweed field coat. And I thought when I saw it, I absolutely loved it. It looked absolutely beautiful. I purchased it, I think for $350, but I found when I actually wore it over many months and many wears that I actually did not like the field coat. Now, it wasn't anything to do with the structure of the field coat. It had mostly to do with how I like to style my outfits during the fall and winter, which is I typically like to wear a button down shirt and a tie in some way, whether that's putting a sport coat over the top of that or a sweater, in this case with a field coat. 
And I found that over many wears, I just did not like the way that the filled coat looked with the button down shirt and a tie. There was something off about it to me. It just wasn't to my taste, so to speak. And so eventually I had to sell off that filled coat because it didn't fit into my style or my wardrobe. And I sold it at a considerable loss. I can't remember exactly how much I sold it for, but it was probably somewhere near 100 to $125. So what I would recommend that you do here again, particularly if you are just starting off, you're selling off of your, you're selling onto your menswear journey, right? is that I would recommend that you try to buy a comparable piece to the one you're interested in on eBay or Grilled or whatever other used platform you want to, and then see if you can incorporate that item into your wardrobe, see if it fits with your style. So to give you another example, I recently did this with bomber jackets. For a very long time, I have wanted a G9 Barracuda Harrington jacket or bomber jacket. And although it was very, very hard for me to kind of convince myself to spend the amount of money that it would cost for a new one, which I think is $450, depending on where it is that you purchase it, uh, you can find them sometimes new or used on eBay or Grill for anywhere between $100 and $250. And again, if you find one of those lower priced items, of course, purchase it, right? But because I wanted a new one at $450, but wasn't sure how I could incorporate it into my wardrobe and whether I would actually like it or not, what I did is I purchased a comparable version on eBay for significantly less. So in this case, I got a JC Pim, I almost said Pimmer, a JC Penny Fox bomber jacket for $5, literally $5. And I have worn that bomber jacket multiple times and I feel like I feel confident enough in my wearing it and how it fits into my wardrobe to say that I can envision myself spending $450 on a bomber jacket, right? And here again, it was just a $5 investment. But if the reverse happened and I had actually spent $5 and found out that I don't like bomber jackets or that they don't fit into my style. Well, consequently, I would have saved myself, you know, $445 on that particular item. Now, of course, there's gonna be a catch here because it's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison. Of course, the G9 Barracuda jacket is going to be a bit different from the JCPenney's Fox jacket. But just given the construction of the jacket itself and how it fits into my wardrobe, I know enough about it to feel like I would really like that piece and that I would wear it for a very long time. So it's my recommendation to you, particularly if you are experimenting with a piece that you haven't worn before, don't actually try to purchase the item new. Try to get it vintage at a a, a smaller cost, right? Or try to get it used at a smaller cost. Or if you can't do that, try to find a comparable version on eBay and experiment with that before you decide to go through and make the purchase. I think that by doing that, you are going to save yourself potentially a lot of fucking money. And I wish I would have done that for a lot of the garments that are in my wardrobe or rather were in my wardrobe. Now, the last piece of advice is me somewhat hearkening back to the first piece of advice, which is that when you are getting started on your menswear journey, I believe that you should purchase new items very, very sparingly. This is somewhat related to the menswear cliche, don't or excuse me, buy quality, don't buy quantity, which is true in so far as it goes. But you should not think of quality as being necessarily new items. There are plenty of ways to acquire quality items that are not necessarily new online through eBay or Grilled. Now, the reason why this is so important, particularly when you're getting started off on your menswear journey, is because you do not have a good sense of what your tastes are. 
your tastes are not a consequence of your personal experience with clothing or garments. Rather, they are just impressions of what you think is cool that you've seen on social media platforms like Instagram or Pinterest or what have you. So the ideas of what you think you are going to like are going to be very different from what you actually like when you start wearing garments and start testing them out, experimenting with them. And you're gonna find very quickly that there are things that you thought you liked that you don't actually like. But the only way that you can actually know that is through experiencing those particular garments. So here again, your taste is going to radically change, particularly in the first few years of your menswear journey. And I would say to save you a lot of money, I would recommend trying to buy vintage items that are comparable to what you think you're going to like as much as possible because your taste is going to radically change once again. All right, so those are three quick lessons that I have learned in my first two to three years of menswear and since I've had to sell off most of my wardrobe. I hope that you guys found these very, very instructive. So if you enjoyed this content, hit that like button, smash subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be informed when I drop more videos very soon on the Holsey style. Until next time, guys. Yas, we are out. Slay.